ground. Mission control could only wait it out until the spacecraft passed over the states and into tracking range. How was it going? We had restudied work in space for this flight. We replanned our tasks, and it was a last chance for Gemini. But waiting is sometimes a hard job. How was it going? Onboard cameras show us that it was going pretty well indeed. Pilot Aldrin moves out the hatch along the portable handrail, which he had installed during the stand-up EVA the day before. He attaches a tether from the Agena to the spacecraft. That tether would come in for some good use later today. The spacecraft was now passing over the United States, and Mission Control received its first news of what was going on. Buzz Aldrin was at the Agena workstation. While working, he is attached by a waist tether. This gives him a secure position, and he has both hands free for the job. Doctors were counting his heartbeat closely during the work period. So far, it had been pretty much below 120. After finishing up at the Agena workstation, Aldrin makes his way along the handrails to the hatch and the rest period. At this time, he is at the adapter area and has been conducting the EVA for more than 40 minutes. Although we have no onboard film of the adapter work area, the pilot performed seven tasks there, much as we saw in the underwater simulation. When we next pick up the EVA on film, the astronaut is again at the Agena workstation. He tests the waist tether and comments, the restraints are good. I don't see any problem in positioning my body at all. The next assignment is use of a torque wrench on a bolt. The same type of job had been performed at the adapter section. The wrench can be set for any value from 50 to 200 inch pounds. He had performed 19 tasks, 12 at the Agena station, seven at the adapter, a good EVA work session. Now, like any good workman, the pilot sets about cleaning up his work area. Okay, he said, workstation is clear. As he got back in, Jim Lovell greeted him with, okay, here's your seat, Buzz, that's it. Gemini 12, Houston Capcom, one minute to LOS, new EVA record, beautiful job. That new record was two hours, nine minutes on umbilical EVA. Command pilot level undocked from his target vehicle, 47 hours, 31 minutes from liftoff. He was between stations, between Canavan and Canton Island. Command pilot level is backing off slowly from the target vehicle, pulling on the 100-foot Dacron tether attached to his spacecraft during the umbilical EVA. He will now attempt to extend this tether until it loses all slackness and becomes taut. As expected, that takes a bit of doing at first. The tether whips back and forth and develops loops. But if the command pilot can position these two vehicles on the tether, the one lower as the Agena is and the other higher as is Gemini 12, there will be a very slight difference in the gravitational pull of the Earth upon the two. Small as it is, this difference may be strong enough to stabilize the spacecraft and the Agena. Now Gemini 12 is in its second daylight pass of this exercise. Jim Lovell has his tether extended and taut. He turns off both spacecraft and Agena control systems. The tether remains taut. The two vehicles move through space, maintaining their positions without use of thrust or fuel, a technique important for future space missions. After four hours and 20 minutes, the tether exercise was ended. Command pilot Lovell jettisoned the tether. The mission had now lasted 51 hours and 51 minutes. It was time for the crew to separate from their target vehicle. They would perform a six foot per second pause grade maneuver to give them sufficient clearance. Target vehicle and spacecraft went their separate ways and the crew slept. The next day was Monday and it began for the crew at 1.15 a.m. over the Rosenot Victor tracking ship.
The crew had a third and final EVA ahead of them. It was a stand-up EVA this time, devoted to ultraviolet photography. But there would also be an opportunity to jettison some excess EVA equipment no longer needed. The hatch was opened at 66 hours, 11 minutes. The pilot took ultraviolet photographs of the sunrise and of selected constellations. After 51 minutes, the hatch was closed, and with it, the crew had closed out three planned EVAs with remarkable success. Not long after this, Gemini 12 received its flight update for a 60-1 recovery. It would now fly the full four days and come down in the primary recovery area in the Western Atlantic. Tuesday, the fourth day, began on a familiar note. The crew was awakened early. Flight Director Krantz was checking the fuel cells again, but no major problem. Although the more dramatic segments of flight were behind Gemini 12, the crew was quite busy completing outstanding experiments. A preliminary retrofire time of 94 hours was transmitted to them. Suddenly, a lot of time seemed to have gone by very quickly. 19 months since Virgil Grissom and John Young walked up this ramp, the first crew for the first two-man spacecraft. It hardly seemed possible. So matter of fact it was that Gemini 12 was making its last pass over the Canaries and the last pass of the Gemini program. There were brief words with other old friends, Kino, Nigeria, Tananarive, Carnarvon, Australia. And we are one minute from retrofire. Mark. All aircraft are on station as of 18.49-0. Network SRO. Go SRO. Do I have an IP for you from our computer? Okay. Pete Cavery, 24 you. degrees, 44 minutes Roger north. Flight, understand me. The prime recovery ship, the USS Wasp, was on station some 600 miles east of Cape Kennedy as the retro rockets fired. The Wasp waited, as she had on four other occasions for Gemini 4 and Gemini 6, for 7 and Gemini 9. Slightly more than 30 minutes to wait with her helicopters scanning the sky. The spacecraft is entering the Earth's atmosphere at 400,000 feet. We have a chance to make the last ride down with the crew, looking out the pilot's window. This film of re-entry was shot at six frames a second. We are projecting it at normal speed, 24 frames, so our ride will be just a little fast. Heat of re-entry becomes intense. Particles flake off the ablative heat shield and fly onto the window. The intense heat will now break off our communication with the ground for about four minutes. We are midway across the continent, near the Mississippi Delta. The crew has been coming in for 27 minutes. Communications blackout is over. A ground station talks to Jim Lovell. Houston, our data shows you're right in the money. Roger. Roger. Less than 10 minutes to splashdown. Main parachute sighted, in full view of the WASP. DOD Atlantic Chief uh, from the WASP. They estimate the range of five miles to starboard. They see a yellow, orange chute. Estimating altitude uh, 2,000 feet. The slow descent was followed down to the water by cameramen and relayed to the nation by television. Well, Houston, we've got you on the boat too. You look good. Splashdown. The Gemini 12 flight is officially over at 2.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It passes into history. The recovery mission begins. The WASP was almost alongside the spacecraft as it splashed down. 
Rescue swimmers were in the water with a flotation collar, ready to check in with the crew. Jim Lovell was the first to be lifted into the waiting helicopter. It returned immediately with a sling to pick up Ed Aldrin. Both were soon aboard and receiving the congratulations of the helicopter crew. There would be time later to summarize the Gemini program, to add up the major accomplishments we now take for granted. Rendezvous and docking, long duration missions, EVA, pinpoint re-entry. There is a just share for contractor, for Department of Defense, NASA, for flight crew and ground crew, and most of all for the man in the street for whom this program is ultimately designed and without whom it has no meaning. But this day belongs to Gemini 12 and its crew. We must not stint them. These men set out to do a job and finish that job thumbs up. Command pilot and pilot had added five hours, 28 minutes of EVA exposure to the Gemini record. Each established his own individual record. Jim Lovell has flown longer in space than any other man, 18 days, 14 days on Gemini 7, four days just behind him. Buzz Aldrin set his record of two hours, nine minutes on umbilical EVA at workstations. The crew increased our experience at tethered station keeping after successful rendezvous and docking. Finally, Gemini 12 added 14 successful experiments to the Gemini program, which has collected research data for scientists on every flight. More than 50 experiments were conducted on this program. In the tradition of manned flights, the Gemini mission flag is lowered for the last time at the Manned Spacecraft Center. As it comes down slowly, we hear an echo of the words of the program manager. It is now time to go on to bigger things. And we will be able to go on with confidence because there was this program, and it was called Gemini. <laughs>